Hey y'all, how's it going today? We got some new Rosecraft knives in. Let's take a look at these. All right, what do we got here? We got the Anatawahana. I know I'm saying that wrong. Let me look at this again. Awanata. A uh, very interesting keychain pocket dropper knife in. We also have the Savage Creek, which is really interesting because this one's coming in with the genuine stag. Very cool little model here. And I am doing all of these together just because I think it is a little bit easier for me to do them all together like this one. And looking at the name here, we got the Lusa Hitachi. I think that's how you say it. Lusa Hitachi. <laughs> Very interesting models here. What we're going to do is we're going to do some quick size comparison and profile comparison. I'm going to put these in size order, no, not in price order. Um, and then we'll jump into my thoughts and impressions on these. This is definitely more fifth pocket um, pocket dropper to me. But let's do those size comparisons real quick. All right, so we're going to start the size comparisons off against some traditional folders so you guys can see you know they are modern traditional um more folding knife more slip pocket drop or fifth pocket type knives they're definitely nothing big here um not intended for like big hard use work knives right these are just gent carry type knives let's do a couple more and as you can see here, against the Para 3 Lightweight and the Manix 2 Lightweight, again, just to help you, frame of reference for the size, this is a really small one, and these are more your more traditional size knives. i got one more to do for you. Here it is against your Hedgehog. This is a traditional Pocket Knives exclusive, and then your Case Sodbuster, which I think these are more in line with those. So let's go ahead and clean these out, and then we'll jump into thoughts and impressions. All right, so really quick, just to run through these, uh, we're going to start off with the Awanata. I think I'm saying it right, guys. This is definitely a pocket dropper keychain knife to me. Three finger grip on here. D2 Warncliffe blade shape. Um, the D2 on all three of these were super toothy cutting with them just to test them out. They were, you know, getting snagged up a little bit on the catalog paper. But truth be told, I like my D2 to be toothy because I feel like when you go to cut against anything that's not paper, um, it's going to cut really well and it's still going to get your tape and on your packages taken care of and it's going to get your mail taken care of. This one here, though, it has got a really strong spring i would say an eight or a nine i definitely have to kind of pinch it to get it started and then i'm able to sort of grip and uh open and close it with the meat of my finger but i was thinking like you know this might be great um for the lady something that they can easily throw in a fifth pocket on the jeans that they have because their pockets are smaller or maybe throw it on their key ring but it is really strong, guys. Really, really strong. And they may not have an issue with it, but it's definitely not going to be one that's for the faint of heart. Very tight tolerances on here. You got a three screw construction. Um, you know, for any type of maintenance that you may want to do on it, it does look like it actually has a traditional back spring. I do not see a stop pin on here, but very snappy. Check that out, guys. It just snaps into the half stop position. Very snappy. They did a good job with this one. Uh, these are coming in 
at $65 on their website if you're interested in this particular version. We're going to jump down to the stag, the Savage Creek stag here. This one was very interesting. The stag bone, very thick and contoured. I think, you know, if you went down too skinny, it might be hard to do this properly where you have the texturing and the age look to it. Um, for me, it is also a three and a half finger grip. It's got D2 on it. Now, the D2 on this one when I was cutting with it, also very toothy. It was really biting into the paper, the catalog paper, and then very slicey even though it is a shallow knife. It has a tall flat grind with a very thin blade stock on it, and it was going through that cardboard just fine. Nice clip point on here. It's going to work pretty good for your detail work to get into a pinch grip and getting to your packages, your mail, and things like that. This is going to do really nicely for this for those tasks. I would say the stag is definitely more of an acquired look. Um, it's definitely a throwback look to the handle materials as well. They continue to do a really awesome job with the build quality on these. The back spring transitioning to the liners for the steel and the bolster are really hard to detect. There's like almost nothing there that you can feel until you get over to maybe a little bit right there um, over until the stag bone scales which you know really they're very cool looking but this is really not my style of knife walk and talk on here i would say it is a stronger pull than i remember when you're trying to pinch it without using the nail nick when you're trying to use the nail nick it's about the same the stag bone definitely um dampens the sound and it does have a stop pin. Yeah, I would call it a seven. Nah, I call it a six. Six, seven. Yeah, six and a seven. Very cool. D2 again, really well constructed. The last one here, and I'm going to take a look at the name one more time because I don't want to mess it up. The Lusahachi. Lusahachi. I guess that's what you're calling it. Um, this one here has been my favorite out of all the ones here. You got a beautiful wood scale with a little crest inlay from Rosecraft. You got steel stop pins here. Very nice. You got that same construction here. You can't really feel the transition hardly at all. Super clean. Very low profile. You got just a coffin shape here, which I really do like. You got three and a half finger grips on it, which made it very comfortable during the cutting. The clip point blade that you see on here has a little bit of a taller flat grind on it. So it was going through the paper, very toothy. The D2 is toothy, which again, I like. And it was slicing through that cardboard very nicely as well. And just a really good thin geometry on it. You got a belt satin finish on this blade. Um, more polished. No, it's about the same. It's just easier to see because of that taller fat grind. So you got belt satin on all three of these blades. The clip point on this one has a, f a real steep drop to it. So that's going to be really good for your detailed work, draw cuts, detailed cuts, getting into packages without any detail. I like the stainless steel bolster on this one. It's a little bit bigger than it was on the Savage Creek. So very cool looking. And I think it just ties into all the polish on here very well. I very much like this one. Um, man, the walk and talk on this one. Walk and talk is really good on this one. That stop pin on there does mute a little bit on the close, but the open and half stop, it really talks to you guys. I would say the pool about a six and a half in the mid and a seven on the open very nice this one's my favorite out of the bunch for sure the lusahachi i'm i'm just gonna say the lusahachi until someone corrects me but these three from rosecraft are really interesting this one here really talks to me my favorite continues to be the hedgehog from qsp and traditional pocket knives exclusive and it, i used to think
This had the best walk and talk, but I really like the walk and talk on this one. This one's definitely really cool. D2 is a great steel. Um, you just got to make sure it doesn't stay moist if you're storing it for long periods of time. Just throw a little bit of lube on there. It'll it'll help it from um, any type of corrosion or anything like that. But what do you think about these new models from Rosecraft? They're very interesting to me. I very much enjoyed getting to check them out a lot. I thought they were really, really cool. Um, leave your comment about these down below on your way down there. If you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and hit that like button. It does help me with the algorithm. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. I'd love to have you follow along as we go through and do knife content like this. I also do EDC gear. Um, and I'll, you know, some of that is like earbud, electronic stuff, probably a little bit more than some of your other channels out there get into on their, on their content. But I just talk about everything that I carry all the time to share it with you just in case it does help you or you're looking at something like that. A special thank you to the channel members. Your extra layer of loyal support really helps the channel, guys, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate that. I love you all. I hope you have a fantastic week. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.